Hello, reformers, and welcome back to Parisno 0.73. Now, when we left off, we had taken a huge amount of prisoners, we had gained a huge amount of money, and we have a very strong army indeed. And we're just going to be leveling up a couple more of our trained slaves right there. Now, I have been in pursuit of these Dezuk slavers here. Now, unfortunately, they, they do not have any rescued prisoners for us to take, but. I am not really looking for that. I'm looking for some prisoners for us to sell. So let us head in here versus these fellows. And yeah, they do appear to only have 26 of them, but many of them are knocked unconscious already. So most of our work has been done for us, which is actually pretty nice, I have to say. So as you can see, I've actually switched my horse back to the Corsa because it has now actually been rejuvenated from being sway backed. And it is a normal Corsa now, so it is exceptionally fast, which I am very happy to say is going to hopefully help us out quite a lot in being super quick. And I mean super quick. Look at that, 142% speed bonus. That is exactly what we like to see right there. Now, the only thing that I'm a little bit worried about is the fact that these slaves right here, they're probably going to be able to kill the Corsa incredibly quickly, so I need to be very, very cautious when it takes damage. As you just saw right there, <laughs> it got taken out very, very quickly indeed. But that's not really that bad because we do have the ability to now take them out pretty easily as we are on foot. So that's not too bad. Now, I would like to take out this. Yeah, there we go. Thank you very much. And there we go. That was a very quick and easy battle to begin this episode. I like that. So, yes, we can take hmm, 16. I was hoping for a little more than that, but... So be it. Okay, we'll take one mace to sell. And our horse has become crippled already, which is actually really unfortunate. This is also sway-backed, by the way, so if I left it in my inventory for a little bit longer, then it probably would have rejuvenated itself and we could have a regular courser, which would actually be really nice. Or shall we say a regular dark war horse, which would be cool, but yeah, it appears as though that will not be the case this time around. But yeah, we're now going to head back on to... Letting these mercenaries join. Thank you very much. Okay, what kind of mercenaries have joined us? <gasps> Mercenary lancers. Look at that, 194. Okay, now the only problem with this, as you can probably see, the wages. The wages are, oh yeah, really bad. Really bad for us right now. Hmm, I think I probably need to invest in something, so I think I might actually be purchasing some land, maybe. Maybe? Should I purchase some land, or should I go to speak to the guild master? I'm actually unsure what I should do in that regard. Well, we'll see soon, I think. Now, hmm, we do have a couple of... Well, we have a companion here, and we have a potential unit gain over there as well. But I would like to sell my prisoners. I'm not entirely sure why the tavern keepers are not allowing me to sell anymore. That is very strange. Okay, well, the best thing I can do is I hope I can find the Ransom Broker. Yes, he is here. Thank goodness. Okay, I want to sell all the prisoners. That is 3,300. Pretty nice. And hmm, where shall I purchase a dye works or an iron works? I think I'll probably purchase an iron works. So let's take a walk around the streets. And oh, do I remember? Do I remember where to find the Guildmaster in these places? I have... Not visited the Guildmaster for quite a long time. I think he's up here. Let's hopefully be right about that. I hope so, at least. I think that is him over there. Yes, it is. Excellent. Okay, so I can speak to him, and let's take a look here. I wish to buy land. Okay, so is it good for us to actually build an ironworks in this city? Okay, our profit would be 800. Oh my goodness. And it only costs us 6,000. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Okay, that's going to be pretty nice, actually. That will be done in seven days, I believe, or something around that. Okay, so I think the best thing we can do right now is just continue to fight really large parties of foreign invaders and, indeed, Dezuk slavers so that we can potentially get more rescued prisoners get more prisoners for ourselves, and sell them, of course, for a good amount of cash. And, aha! A perfect party for us to prey upon, as you can see right there. They have some rescued prisoners, and 
They have a good amount of foreign warlords and invaders, and indeed grunts as well for us to attack. So let's see here. We have 5.7, they have 3.8. We are now into the tree, so we have 4.0. That is perfectly fine. So we can catch up, no problem at all. I'm actually thinking... What we're going to do is I might actually, once I have made enough money, I might just wait for a lot of time. And, yeah, might just wait for a lot of time just to see whether one of the factions becomes weaker, one of the factions becomes stronger, and then we can decide whether we're going to be creating our own faction right off the bat, which is going to be pretty risky, i got to say, because if we do that... We're not going to have the ability to gain any right to rule beforehand unless we send Kara off to, well, spread the word of our becoming the king of the entirety of Burizno or something along those lines. But yes, that's going to be pretty tricky, I do believe. But, well, we'll see. We'll see how that goes because usually if you're a vassal, then your faction declaring war, making peace, declaring war, making peace, and so on, that does help to gain a lot of renown and, well, technically a lot of right to rule at the same time, because of course the renown comes along when you fight in their campaigns and various other engagements with their vassals. So I'm unsure how it's going to work, but I'm very hopeful that we will make it work as best we can. But you never know, some things never work out as you intend, so you never know what could happen. Something amazing could happen, like the Zan Dynasty, for example, coming into the game at day 300 or something along those lines. That might happen very, very soon, and we might then have the opportunity to join them. Maybe we should join them. Maybe hmm, That might actually be a plan as well. Who knows? Everything is completely up in the air right now for me. I have no clue which one we are going to be siding with, and if we're going to be siding with anyone. I'm not sure. I don't even know whether that would be a good idea, really, because we're going to become a vassal again. And even though I would love to be able to conquer the entire map with a faction and become a very, very strong vassal in that particular faction, the issue is that we're becoming a vassal and we're not actually becoming anything a little bit more powerful than that. I somehow wish that maybe in Bannerlord, maybe in Bannerlord what they're going to potentially be doing is even though it may not be possible, I would like to have more of a structure when it came to vassals and kings and all that kind of thing. So instead of just having vassals and kings, we would have ministers, we would have some sort of foreign power minister and, you know, all those kinds of things that would actually give a little bit more depth to the ranking system. And each individual minister would have different powers so the defense minister would obviously see to having all of the fiefs be completely fine he would assign different vassals to different things and you know decide what kind of units each garrison would have and so on but yeah that's just a very preliminary thought of mine but I feel as though that could actually work out quite nicely so maybe Maybe we'll see that, but yeah, I just like more complexity, I do believe. That would be pretty nice. And let's see here. We can take a couple of pieces of loot. That was actually really good. So we have 45 prisoners. I like it. I like it a lot. Can we find any others? We can. And these guys are actually running from us. They were following us, and now they're running from us. So let's see if we can actually take these guys on. These guys are going to be pretty fun to fight, I do believe. Because they are so large. And I think we'll get a Sword Maiden and a Sword Sister, just to vary things up a little bit. So we have... Hmm. Yeah, that's actually not too good. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to fight those guys just yet, because we have 45, and we only have enough for 75 prisoners, and no doubt we're going to be losing a couple of units in the engagement itself. So I'd like to sell our current prisoners before we actually do anything else. Oh! Oh, I'd love to attack those. Okay, please, quickly, let's get into Kulvara and hopefully be able to sell immediately. No? I do not know why the Tavern Keeper is not allowing us to sell. Hmm. Okay. Very strange. I don't know why that's happening now, but... 
what can you do? So instead, I suppose we will head on to Dezuk itself. Oh, what is going on here? While travelling, your party comes across a small cottage with an adjoining garden. Although there is fish cooking over a fire out front, nobody seems to be here. Okay, okay, well, yeah, I do believe we will be leaving a small bag of 300 orms by the fire and continuing on our way. We gain some honour and we lose some orums, of course, and whoa. You do not want to mess with these guys. That is for sure. Eagle War Party. That is insane. Okay. So yes, actually one of you mentioned in the comments that what we could potentially do is a couple of quests. I do believe there is a quest at Amana, and I will be checking that out, I do believe, in the next episode. And also there is a quest at Four Nyan. Now, the quest at Four Nyan, I do believe, is in regards to the Bluewood Rangers and Bluewood Nobles, and... It pretty much means that we have to take this, I think. We have to take this town, and then you are granted 50 Bluewood Rangers. I do know that we heard about that previously, but yes, at the time, I do believe we had to become a vassal. Is that true? We had to become a Redwood Nation vassal just to betray them or something? I have no idea. No, it appears that doesn't make sense, does it? But nevertheless, there is that option. And I would like to be doing some quests very, very soon. I'm just making sure that our party is going to be strong enough to be able to handle anything that anything comes at us. So, you know, we can hopefully defeat everything. But obviously not too easily. We do want to have a little bit of a challenge, but 15,000. Very nice indeed. 15,000 orums right there. But yes, I think... After this episode, I will be heading down to Amana, and I'll check out what kind of quest we can acquire from there. Because at that point, I think we will have had a good enough time in terms of us actually getting a good, strong, solid army together. And I'm actually really hopeful that I'll be able to find those foreign invaders that were over here. Oh yes! Whoa, we were very lucky indeed. So please... Noyan, Uramada, Noyan, please just ignore these foreign invaders. I really need to catch up to them. That would be wonderful. As you can see, they have some Draharan units. Even though Draharan units I'm not a big fan of, I have to say. Because they are mostly on horses. But, yeah, they have a bit of a mixture. And I do prefer unity in that sense. Or should we say uniformity? Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh no! Jahara Elephant Mercenaries! Ah, okay, let us just hope that they get defeated by our foreign invader friends. It doesn't... nope! <laughs> it doesn't look as though that is going to happen. Ah, that is so unfortunate. Okay, yeah, we were just out of range. Oh my goodness. Okay, well I suppose we can take on these guys instead. And they do have many, many more units for us to take prisoners, so I suppose that will be fine. We do need a good amount of experience anyway, so I think this should be good. Now, why is the... Ugh, I have no idea what's going on, but in the last couple of episodes that I've made, just generally in Warband, the battle size has been incredibly small. And I'm actually unsure why that is. I'm going to have to see my battle size modifier in the text file itself and I'll see what I can do about changing it again because apparently it's reverted back to its default state or something because as you see we only have 67 and the enemy has 58 usually we'd have about a hundred each so yeah I'm actually a little bit worried about that not too sure what's going on but never mind I suppose we will be able to do this without too many issues but huh very strange very very strange indeed Okay, so the best thing we can do is level up to 17. That is great. And then we can, of course, take on these fellows as well. Come on, deal some damage. Our mount's taking a little bit of damage, but thankfully enough, because it is armored, it is not taking too much. Oh my goodness, yeah. Just as I say that, we take way too much damage right there. Uh, okay. Well, I suppose the only thing we can slightly try to do is just defend many of our units and hope that they don't get killed entirely because we need the space. We need the prisoner space, of course. And if we lose more units, then of course that diminishes quite considerably, which is not great. Okay. 
Ha. Huh. Okay, I think they're probably going to kill my mount soon. Because it is moving very slowly. Or maybe not. Never mind. Okay, this guy is definitely going to kill my mount, I think. Or not. Oh, or not. Okay, we actually took him out. I cannot believe it. Our mount is still surviving. I think I might actually get off my mount very, very soon. Because it is going to be destroyed. And I don't want to get it crippled. So, ah, never mind. Okay. It didn't get crippled anyway, so I suppose that's fine. But we do need to help. Yes. Take out that foreign invader. Now, hopefully we can try and jump and take out one of these guys as well. No such luck right there. Come on. Ah. Okay. Oh, no. They're coming in with all of their foreign warlords now. This is not good. Usually, if we had a good battle size, this would already have happened. Oh, no. Oh, no. Whoa, okay. Wow. Yeah. I was trying to block against that foreign invader, or should we say foreign warlord, and it didn't really work out as well as I had hoped. Okay, so we have 51 units, and we have 20 dead so far, and they have 24 remaining. Now, the problem with this is that many of the, <laughs> many of the enemy units remaining are foreign warlords, which are probably the heaviest unit that we're going to fight very, very soon. This is exactly what I mean, though. If we cannot fight these guys without decisively winning, very, very easily indeed, then how are we going to fight against the quest objectives? Because I know that the quest objectives are very difficult at some points, and, well, I wouldn't want to fail and then lose all of our units in one fell swoop, because that would mean that I'd have to work up from zero, from scratch, once again. Which would not be great. It would not be great, that's for sure. I think it would probably be quite a humbling experience, of course, because, yeah, usually at the point where I'm able to steamroll basically everything, I get overconfident. And the overconfidence is usually the most brutal thing that can ever happen, because then, as soon as it's overconfident time, we usually end up losing because of that. So, yeah, do need to take that into account if and when we are able to steamroll things. Which, at the moment, we are not, as you can see. We did lose 24 units, but we were able to take out a pretty deadly foreign invader team. 21 Renown and 18 Mirage is our reward right there. We lost 24, so how many units and what kind of units did we lose? Okay, we lost quite a few of our caravan guards. That's okay. Ah, we lost three of our quite highly leveled mounted units and yeah okay i wouldn't say that that's too bad we do get 43 prisoners which i would say is going to be very very good we're going to be able to sell them for a lot of cash we do need it after all and there is a draharan helmet for 445 that we can sell which i suppose is okay and yeah that is all good now wait a second antiope i do not believe has a helm no she does not so there we go now she has a helm that's going to help her out i do believe okay thank you very much so yes let's get some more shock cavalry let's get some hakon imperial spearmen trained slaves sword sister and some Draharan veteran spearmen as well. Now, of course, Scout has leveled up, so let us, without further ado, take a look at his stats. Now, what are we actually going for here? Well, I suppose we were going for agility, so let's go for another point in that. And what else? We have one point. One point to spend, and what are we going to put it in? Well, I'd like to either put it in shield or iron flesh, because... Well, as you know, I do tend to get taken out incredibly quickly, but that's not because of my HP level, and it's not because of my shield getting destroyed either. It's primarily because of me. Yes, it's primarily because of me not blocking or doing the right thing in combat. So I suppose I'll just take a point in shield, because if we do end up doing a siege at some point, then I would like to be able to block all the arrows that are coming towards us and various other crossbow bolts as well. I think that would probably be the way to go. So, yes, there we have it. Very nice indeed. So let's head back to Tezuk because that appears to have a resident ransom broker already there. And we'll hopefully be able to sell these 43 prisoners and then we'll be in a very, very good spot indeed. Even though we were before, but I'd like to be able to then head on to Matarea, maybe purchase another ironworks over there, which would be even better. 
So, yes, it appears as though the Ransom Broker is always here, which is very nice. 13,000, very, very good. And I'd like to flip a coin with you for 500. I'm going to select Tails. Yeah, there we go. Nice 500 right there. I like it. Okay, so yeah, there we have it. That's actually rather nice. We can head over to the goods, and we can sell a various amount of loot. And it appears that lame hunter horse is taking a long time to rejuvenate itself. That's very strange. Okay, I'm going to be switching back to the Corsa because I want this sway-backed Dark War Horse to get cured from its sway-backed nature. Hopefully that will happen at least. But whatever the case, we're going to be heading on to Matarea and taking a stroll around the streets to try and find the Guild Master. Oh, thankfully we are on our horse here as well, so this is going to be easy to find him, I hope. I think he's up these stairs here. Can I go up the stairs with the horse? I don't think so. Yes, there he is. Okay, that is very nice. I like that. I am not a big fan of the mods that decide to put the Guildmaster very, very far away from the spawn area, but thankfully this one is not like that. So, let's see here. Ironworks. And we are going to make 713. Yep, why not? Let's do it. We can actually pay for two ironworks with the profit from one batch of slaves. That is actually really good profit right there. That's really nice. So yeah, we're getting some really nice investments right here. I think I'll probably head to Kulvara and maybe to Arish as well. And maybe buy one or two more ironworks depending. But yeah, I think that's really going to help us out in the long run. It's going to be very, very good. So wait a minute. Let's just take a look at our weekly budget report right here. So yeah, as you see, they're giving us 700 roughly each. And that is reducing the amount of wages that we have to pay by a considerable margin, I have to say. So if we can get another couple of those, I think we'll actually be in a really good spot. So without further ado, I will be ending this episode off here. And next time on Prisno 0.73, I do believe we will be heading over to Ramana and taking a look at the quest there. And hopefully our forces will be able to deal with it. So I thank you for watching and I will see you next time.